jolly good. Three. Oh, gotcha. It's that time of year again. The heating's in full swing. Yeah, it's, it's day and night, roaring away. And um, got a little leak. So this is in the bathroom. We've got this towel rail radiator and uh, one of the valves on the bottom here, it's been leaking. So every morning when I get up and come in the bathroom, I'm finding this little trail of water on the floor where it's been dripping out of here. Uh, as you can see that it's, it's wet. So what we're gonna do today is uh, wherever I've got it somewhere, there we go. I've got a new valve there. Um, we're gonna replace this valve on the radiator for a new one. Bit of a chore, but hey ho, let's crack on. So this is running on a combi boiler system. So the actual, uh, it's pressurized. The system is pressurized. It's still a little bit warm, but it's not been on for about half an hour or so. So it's cooled down a tad. Um, but we've got to release the pressure in the radiator. So we'll go to the top and we'll just crack off the bleed valve and just bring the pressure in the system down. Let's mop up this water so I don't stand in it or sit in it. Get myself all wet. And if we take that, there, yeah, stick that lot of water coming out of there. Yeah. So I've got my trusty old bowl there. I'll shove that under there for now. And when I crack that off the top, the water should just run down and uh, dribble into the bowl. So let's just pop the, the valve there. And it's got a little hole in the back. So when I crack this off, we should get some We'll just leave that open until all the pressure's gone. You'll get water coming out. You can hear the air coming out at the minute. It's because this one's been leaking, so there's a, there's a lot of air in the top of this radiator. So that's just now filling this radiator back up again with water. There's the air, come, the, here we go, look. And now we just need to get, get this water pressure out of the system until that stops coming out of there. Then we know this the system is not pressurized anymore. And that's just running down out of there. Running down out of there and into his bowl at the bottom lot. And you can see as the water is coming out, there's the pressure gauge on the boiler. And you can see the pressure's dropping. rag over the top of that. Stop it squirting up the wall. It's dripping out nicely now. There you go, look, the pressure's almost down, it's just trickling out now. And we're getting there, look. Right, so now that's down there, I'm just gonna chuck an old towel on the floor. I'll get rid of that water there, it's in the bowl, we don't need that. Put this old towel down, catch any any drips that we get or any mess that comes out. Uh, I've got too much, I need to get the bowl in. Get the bowl there, Let's just get that round that pipe because that's where it's going to try and roll down into. Right, okay, so we're there with that. <laughs> this could be good, it's got to go everywhere. That's great. <laughs> we should be all right there now because we've took the pressure out of the system that's all drained down so we're just going to crack off we're going to take this union off here leaving this nut we're not going to we're, we're not going to replace this nut so the olive is still going to be on this pipe literally all we're going to do is replace the guts of this so this part here with the olive in it we're not going to use because there's one already on there and again, this section here, we're gonna remove that. We don't need to use that either. All I'm gonna change is this part. So it's gonna be a quick undo, bang that straight back on again, job's a good one, in theory. Will it work? All right, let's get you down here. So we've turned this one off this is now switched right off to zero. 
and this one here, I'm going to attempt to turn it, but I don't know if it's going to be seized up or not. So let me just see if I can squeeze that all the way in. Not that it makes a massive difference on this one, because I'm just going to whip it off anyway. So yeah, it's turning, look, it's turning. You can see it dripping from this. This valve though, it's uh, well and truly had it. So we've got this trusty adjustable spanner, which is perfectly set for that. And then we can also crack that off there. So I'm gonna go for the radiator first. I'm gonna take this big one off here first, and then I'm gonna whip that off there. That's ready to go back on again. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's the first one cracked off. And here comes the fluid. That's that one off, and let's do this one. Actually, I'll just have that hanging on there a little bit just to give us something to uh, loosen this one off. Okay, that's just to crack that off there. Oh, so that one's coming out as well. So here we go. That's that one. One done there. Loose that one off there. That's loose. That one's stuck. Can you see what I'm doing there? I don't need to miss out on this. Let me try and get you in a bit better. Undo that. That's the good ones coming out of the radiator. Ah, uh, she's stuck on here. Ah, ah, ah. Alright, that's that off, so I've got my finger over that now. Alright, the new one, which is this one. Just put a stop to that for a minute. Now if I turn that and get that lined up and ready to go, ooh, I'm gonna just go for this. This is gonna make a mess. Where's that sheet cloth? I get the cloth on there. All right, here we go. With a one, a two. <laughs> And a jolly good three. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> oh. Right, let's try and get that back in there now. Woo hoo hoo, you beauty. <laughs> that was a close one. Oh. Alright, uh, no, let's just get this doing up now. Oh. Doesn't feel quite like it wants to go. Yeah, it's got to be there. It's got to be going up now. Let's have a look. Doesn't feel very good that. There it is. It is, it's there, that's better. All right, let's pull that up now.
That's that one done up there. I'm just going to do this top one. Just hold that as best we can. Oh, right, that's up tight. Let's send this one again. Bingo. Pokey cokey. Let's get rid of that skanky water. Give this a good dry down. And here. Right then, so the new valve's in place. It's all here, we can now Turn it on. Where's that dripping from? Is it coming out the back of that? I think I've got a bit of water in the behind this cap. Just that little bit came out then. Just try and tighten this a bit more. Make sure it is all nice and tight. Right, so we'll open this valve up now, get this one on. And now we can pressure and now we can pressurise up the system. Okay, so on mine the boiler is situated here in the bathroom and below it is this cupboard. And if I pop the cupboard open, it reveals the pipes. Now what you've got here is a non-return isolator valve and then you've got the water feed to refill the system. So what we do to start with is open up the non-return valve, like so. And then looking at the pressure gauge, on here you can see it's down in the red. We're gonna just open up this feed here. You can hear the water going in. And we'll watch the pressure rise on the gauge until it gets to about just over the one. Which is about there. And then I'll lock that off again. And then turn off the isolator. Like that. And then like before, we just crack off this little bleed screw. Because this now is going to have loads of air in it because all that water we lost. And we just keep feeding that out. You can hear the air coming up there. Until this radiator gets water coming out again that means all the air is expelled from the radiator put this little cloth there to catch any water obviously as the air comes out of here the pressure gauge on the boiler drops so we might have to top that back up again. Oops, I can wait Oh, there we go. That's all the air out of that radiator. So we're up to speed there. So once again, we're checking for leaks. There's no water around any of those pipes or joints. Feels good. So let's turn on the heating system, get this warmed up, get some pressure, more pressure in the system. So as you can hear, the boiler's in full swing. The radiator, oh, she's warm now, really hot, nice and hot. Pipes are hot, wash your beauties. And we've got no dribbly dribblies from any of the joints. So. 
you just need to check that all of your radiators in all of the other rooms are getting hot still because these return valves on the on the radiator it's for um, it's for flow to get the flow balanced between the system so if this one's open too much then this radiator being the first one in the system because the boiler's right next to it all the hot water will just circulate through here and always find the easiest route back to the boiler so if this one's open too much it'll just return back and there'll be some radiators in the house that are cold if that's the case all we need to do is just slowly tweak this just close it slightly so this one is still staying hot but also then it forces the water around the rest of the system to keep all the other ones in, in balance and keep them all warm. So um, I'll go and check the others and see where we are, make sure I've got this about right. It should be about right. I went all the way in and about a turn, it was about one turn back, um, which I think is about right. So uh, let's see how we get on. Good job. <laughs> so if like me, you're wondering what was going on inside this old valve, let's have a little look. We'll take it to bits and uh, see what's happening inside it. It's always interesting to see what uh, see what caused the problem. So uh, let's go for it. You can actually see that it's a bit cruddy in there. You can undo it. Yeah. All right, let's have a look. Okay, so it's a it's a fifteen mil. Uh, 15 millimeter on there so let's see if we can crack that off oh that's really tight oh something's happened I don't quite know what something's gonna snap in a minute is it reverse thread haha <laughs> haha is it reverse thread uh, of course it's reverse thread Oh, what a muppet. It's a reverse thread. <laughs> oh dear, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Here we go, look. Let's whiz that out of there. So, here it comes. It's actually undoing itself from the centre as I'm undoing that, so... Right, here we have it. Let's have a look. So, we've got... An outer spinning on an inner there's absolutely nothing to that look it is just literally a, a brass shim sliding on a that just threaded up to that so the problem of it all is down to the washer that is inside there so let's pick that out and have a look see what we get inside that so is this a washer? What is going on in there? Is it actually moulded to the... Is it moulded to the rubber? Oh no, look! Aha! There you go, look. If you can see that, let me get some more light on the job. That's just all perished that. Has. So, what have we got there, look? We've got... just perished a bit I've got a rubber there that's gone a bit crusty look it's got crustaceans on it this it has actually it's all distorted there look I says it should look like that's that both sides but the side that's been facing all the, the water on the inside there has just gone all... It's, it's almost corroded it slightly. So what actually happens with this valve then? So all you're doing is when that's sitting sitting on there like that, and you, you, you do this up, all it does is squashes. It squashes that rubber rubber washer there tight against the the smooth inner which locks it all up so in essence you could just remove remove that from the from the valve 
and replace the rubber washer with the correct one which is easier said than done because you usually find there's so many different shapes and sizes of these things that it's hard to get the right one because the internal dimensions of this is probably going to be different from one make to another um, but yeah there's not a lot to it not a lot at all so I suppose the first thing you can do if you've got a leaky valve is to attempt to tighten this 15 mil head anti-clockwise don't forget that so tighten that anti-clockwise as far as it will go this one was already as far down as it would go it was right in um, but you could try that and it would just squeeze that rubber up which would seal it a bit better um, that would be the first port of call if that didn't work then it's a case of either replacing that that washer which is going to be tricky getting hold of the right one or just replacing the whole thing like what I have there cheapest chips two pound from the plumbers merchants or B&Q that's all they are they're not expensive um, but a bit of a fiddle to change it getting all that black smelly water everywhere see all that black residue in there delightful look lovely if that's been of any use to you drop me a thumbs up give me a comment like, subscribe. If you know of a better way of doing this, then uh, yeah, let me know. I know there's many ways of doing this. You can completely drain the system down and um, uh, yeah, there's lots of ways, lots and lots of ways of doing it. But do you want to drain it all down with all the mess and everything and then have to refill everything and make sure all of your radiators have got no air in them? At least this way, it's all just isolated to the one system in the, in the bathroom that we're doing. So. Uh, it was a bit dicey at one point, getting out of squirting the pressure, but it worked out well in the end, didn't it? So, um, yeah, I'm pleased with that. Good job. Thanks for watching.